Welcome to Reconnect with Plant Wisdom. I'm your host, Tigrila Gardenia, nature-inspired mentor and leadership coach. In this podcast, I share ancient and modern knowledge from biology to spirituality about the wondrous ways in which plants can help you lead a naturally conscious life. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Reconnect with Plant Wisdom. It's me, Tigrila Gardenia. And I have an announcement. I hope you already know about the announcement, to be honest. I really do hope. But this episode, which is episode 53, is all about the new original series, Divine Science. It's a new original Gaia series that I'm in. Now, now I hope that you've heard all about this. Please, please nod that you have. If you haven't, no problem. I'm going to tell you all about it here. Um, So what I really want this episode to be about was about how I ended up on a Gaia series, right? How I got on a Gaia series. Um, And the reason I want to tell you that is because, well, besides the fact that the series itself is amazing and I'm really hoping you're going to watch, I'm going to put all the information you need in the show notes. Um, But I want to tell you about the process of coming to Gaia because I think a lot of times when we see Um, People we love, like, and people that we're really excited about get onto these types of series, especially if we've known them before and then after. Because it's one thing if you discover somebody on television or through any other kinds of, you know, really public means, like having an original Gaia TV show. But another thing is when you follow them and all of a sudden they end up there. And I think it's really easy for us to kind of just um, uh, dis- you know, dismiss the process, like think of it as, as, as luck or all these other aspects. And, um, and yet I think it's really fun to come behind the scenes for you to understand, uh, what it really takes to be on a series of this type and what were the steps and what, what parts of it were actively manifested by myself, for example. Now, this is not the first time I've been on a show um, in many different aspects. As a matter of fact, you might not know this, but I was actually an actor and a singer and a dancer for many years. Um, I've been in several movies and in television shows and in commercials. And so nothing super, super famous, I'll be honest, but a lot of theater. I did a lot of theater. I love theater, especially musical theater. That's like, that's like my passion. I, I, I. That's what I do if I sit in the car and I'm driving. It's like I'm, I'm singing songs from Broadway musicals. So I did a lot of theater, but I also had the benefit of working on a on major movie and a full length as well as shorts. And that was a lot of fun. That was um, really exciting and very much set me up for this process. But I want to take you really back to the beginning. Got my tea. So give me a second. Hmm. I want to take you to the beginning from from beginning to end of hearing about Gaia, getting, you know, introduced to Gaia, to somebody at Gaia, and then the process that it took in order to get to the actual show. And the reason I want to do this is because I want you to be able to manifest your dreams. Now, this is the second time I've very consciously manifested something extremely important to me. The first time was was when um, we got the job for Cirque du Soleil. At the time, my partner came home one day and said, I want to work with Cirque du Soleil. And I was like, great. But at that time, I had a co-owned a circus and he was one of the um, riggers, one of the, the people that was working on my technical staff. And he had all the qualifications to do it. I mean, I, I was really excited about the idea of Cirque du Soleil, but it was like we had no connections. We had no nothing. So I said, OK, we are going to put a plan in place to make this happen. And the plan was not just the physical plan. And this is um, going to my ecosystem thinking of like, when you look at the entire ecosystem, what is the entire ecosystem that is required to shift in order for something like this to be able to come in? So what is the physical aspects, right? You know, resumes and work experience and all these other things. But also the other side of it is what is the the spiritual or the subtle parts of it that also need to shift. In this case, there was a for me, there was a karmic piece connected to him, connected to some past experiences that he had that we needed to we needed to heal. 
And so, and also to prepare ourselves. At the time, we had three cats. We lived in a house. We had so many different things that if they would have called us like the day after to get this job, we would not have been ready and would not have been able to do this. And so, therefore, I felt that energetically we were not in a place where we were open to that type of experience. So we set about and created a plan, right? And the plan was, you know, here are the physical things we need to fix. We need to make our, our life a little lighter. We need to start preparing and thinking about the future. We had long discussions about the cats because, you know, the cats were a very integral part of our lives at that time. And, and we almost didn't go when we were first called because of the cats. We did not want to give up our cats. In the end, our cats had wonderful homes and we were able to solve that issue. But um, it was it was a big life choice, you know, to, to pick up and pack up and sell everything off and get rid of everything. And what do we keep and what do we get rid of and stuff like that. So we didn't know even what were the requirements for something like a Dussolet. So, and then like I said, on the karmic side, as I said before, I think it's extremely important for us to recognize that, you know, we reap what we sow. And so we had, to, we decided to look at our lives very honestly, very um, like completely putting everything out on the table and being like, okay, here are some situations that should we leave, should we even choose to leave, might not allow us to have that flexibility. And so how could we resolve them? And so we went through and we looked at everything. We looked at friendships. We looked at um, economic situations. We looked at debt. We looked at uh, future plans. We, we really did look at everything and started to put in place an overall plan for creating ourselves in a way that we were ready should we ever get the call. And then we also went down the path of like submitting the resume, preparing the resume, getting all the references, you know, all the stuff that you would expect. And within six months, uh, he was offered his first job at Cirque du Soleil. And um, I think I actually we turned down the first one. And I think we went for the second one because one of them was going to Asia and the other one was going to Europe. And we chose to go to Europe at that time. So it was it was um, amazing to see this plan sort of unfold. And I think I had done it unconsciously for most of my life. I mean, when I graduated, when I was getting ready to graduate from high school, my mother was like, oh, let's sit down and look at you know, how, what schools we can afford and things like that. And I went from it from a different perspective. I said, look, mom, I'm going to apply to the schools that I want. I'm going to create the environment. I, I don't think I was as the part of it that I remember being very intentional about was saying to her, I'm going to apply to the schools I really want to go to. And I'm, and I'm going to trust that we're going to find the solution for the economy. Right. And and that was pretty much what happened. I mean, I applied to the schools. I got accepted and then scholarships came in and other opportunities came in so that in the end I was able to go first to Boston, which is where I, I started. And then, you know, to the best school in the country for what I wanted to study, which was actually in my backyard at the University of Miami. So I but I had done it in a, a sort of. I guess I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, I just knew that it wasn't about just looking at like the financials and what you can afford. There was more in place. And by the time the Cirque du Soleil opportunity came around, which was now 10 years later, um, I was already by this point in a spiritual school. I was an initiate of a different path. I knew much more about the overall ecosystem that I needed to build in order for that to happen. So when the Gaia opportunity showed up in front of me in the sense of somebody spoke to me about Gaia and somebody, the first person, first, first person started to say, um, you should really be on Gaia. I took a step back and said, Hmm, interesting. I wonder what this means. And then I had a few different people who would come up to me based on what I was teaching and how I was working and the, the different um, ways that they had interacted with me as a teacher and as a speaker. And, and I kept hearing the, these little voices that kept saying, you should really be on Gaia. You should, we would love to see you on Gaia. And I was like, okay. At the time I knew nothing. I knew only about Gaia 
from the perspective of the same thing, you probably know I had I had known that they were a series online and I knew that they had a channel and I had looked and saw some of the things that they had done, um, but I had absolutely zero connection to Gaia. But I put it in my back of my mind to say, okay, this is something that I want to cultivate, right? I thought of it really as a seed. So if this energetically, uh, what people are saying to me of, you should really be on Gaia. If I think of it as a seed, then my question was, what do I need to pack inside of that seed? Which remember from the seed perspective, it's what is in to nourish this? So what is it that I need to put into this seed? What could I put into the seed to make sure the seed had nourishment? And of course, a lot of that was my professionalism, you know, who I am. You'll notice that if you come online, I have, you know, my website and all of my materials online are very, I try to be very clear. I try to be really direct. I try to develop myself as somebody that would be worthy of Gaia. And I thought about, okay, so the part that I have to do as a seed is that when the seed needs to grow, when the seed finds the environment in which it grows, we want that when the seed starts to germinate, the, the germination, that first sprout that starts to come up is what Gaia is looking for in the sense. So that was on me. That was my first part. And I wanted to go there. But the seed was actually planted by a very, very good friend of mine. So my job was to take these comments people were saying to me and prepare the seed. And that's what I did. The seed was me, right? I needed to prepare myself so that I would be, quote unquote, Gaia ready. And that didn't mean changing anything about myself. That just meant looking at myself to make sure, because, you know, when you do something like television, when you do something like video in general, uh, even this podcast itself, I spent, I think, about two years with the idea of the podcast thinking about the podcast, knowing I wanted to do a podcast. Should I do audio only? Do I do audio and video? How does it look like? What do I say? But honestly, doing a podcast is very intimidating. I don't know about all of you, but it's very intimidating. I can write so the cows come home. I can I can have so much fun writing because writing gives me well, no way. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to back up and I'm going to touch writing a second. But let me be let me be even let me let me even be more transparent and honest with all of you so that you understand. Speaking in public for me is actually much easier. Most of the time when I speak in public, I like doing discussion groups and discussions are a place that for me that's home. I love it. Like if you come into the naturally conscious community, you will see that we have a whole series of different events happening every week that gives us the opportunity to see each other on Zoom and to have conversations with one another. So even when I teach, my teaching style is extremely dynamic and it's extremely interactive. I do not like frontal teaching. Therefore, a podcast was actually a really hard concept for me. Um, even doing just live videos on YouTube and things of this nature or on Facebook lives, um, even within the naturally conscious community, I, I only come live really once a week. Lives are harder for me because I like talking with people. The biggest transformations for me happen in that discussion, in the, the stimulating of ideas back and forth, in the building based on what the other says, that deep, deep, deep listening. That's what really makes me such a great coach is that I love hearing the other person really taking what they're saying and hearing it probably even more deeply than what, what they think that they're saying to go below the surface, to go into what they're trying to say. And then from there, build upon that. And so it's what makes me so powerful as a coaching ally, as your partner, because I hear things that even you, you say, it's kind of like that Freudian slip. I have the opportunity to hear those and to bring those out for you. But when you're doing something like this, like a podcast, you're talking one to many and, and on video, no less, like, you know, you have to look decent at least. And I'm somebody who moves a lot. I'm somebody who, you know, who's very kind of like uh, flamboyant in some aspects. And so it was extremely intimidating. I spent two years before I actually got onto this podcast. So imagine the idea of doing something like Gaia. I mean, you really have to prepare yourself. So I knew that if I was going to, uh, the seed that I had to plant whenever the soil became available for Gaia had to be somebody who had 
a really great reputation because obviously Gaia, as, as you know, Gaia doesn't put just anybody. I mean, Greg Braden and Matthias Stefano and, and you know, Teresa Bullard, who, by the way, is, is an old, old, old friend of mine and one of my first teachers and then became a really great friend. And so, so I'm super excited that I was in an episode with her. But, you know, these are this is the caliber. So I needed to step my game up to that caliber both in the content and the, and the and the quality of my content, but also in myself. So I needed to launch this podcast. I needed to, you know, start doing things more on video. I needed to be ready, camera ready for the day that that opportunity arose. So that was part of my seed planting. And then I needed to build that reputation, right? I needed to make sure that I wasn't going to be hidden, that I, I didn't, I needed to work on my own visibility because as a person, you, you've heard this throughout the podcast, right? I've done so many different things. I've built my career in so many different ways. And so finding my own personal specialization, understanding really what are my gifts and what is my, my deep pattern that I bring out, how do I help the world. And that was something that I needed to make crystal clear because it was had always been clear to me how these things were connected, but it wasn't always visible how they were connected. So these all these elements of first preparing that seed, of preparing myself to be quote unquote Gaia ready was the first piece of it. And then when that was ready, that's when the world started to, the synchronicity started to pour in. And there is the place where if you are not ready, when synchronicity brings you an opportunity, you can't capture it. And so that the, the whole concept of synchronicity is not that it's just dumb luck. It's how do I really guide the wave of synchronicity? So when the synchronicity gives me the opportunity to plant the seed, what do I do with it? And that was the most important aspect. So I have um, some wonderful, wonderful friends, one of which who is a deep, deep soul sister that I have worked on so many different projects with, happened to have become really good friends with one of the directors of uh, Gaia TV. And so when this director happened to be coming to Dom and her, she looked at him and said, you have to meet Tigria. Like, if you do one thing when you go to Dom and her, well, if you do one thing, go to the temples of humankind. I mean, seriously slightly more important than me. But she's like, after that, find Tiria. And luckily he found me the last day he was in town. So he and I got to meet one-on-one. -on -one. And this is another of, of capturing that synchronicity, of guiding that synchronicity. That day was a very challenging day. It was not easy for me to meet with him. There was, we were in like right pre-COVID phase and so there was lots of stuff going on and there was lots of movement and I was getting ready to travel. And so when um, the call came and the person told me where I could find him, I wasn't sure I was going to make it. But I, I, I knew I knew that this was part of that path that I had been building. I had prepared my seed, right? I had been doing many more presentations. I had been starting to dabble in some video. I had really honed in on my specialization and my visibility online. I was preparing myself for the person I wanted to be, which was somebody on a Gaia show. So of course I made an opportunity. I made time for me to capture this opportunity to meet this director. And honestly, it was a very fast meeting. I mean, we, we, saw each other in one of the events that was happening at Tom and her. We just chatted. I, I didn't pitch him anything. I didn't talk about anything. We just met. I wanted him to get a sense of who I am. He asked me some questions about my work. I told him about it and I gave him some information about where he could find out about me. And that was, that was pretty much it. It was a wonderful conversation. He's a super interesting person. Um, I wish he would have had more days here in Delman but unfortunately he didn't. And so when he left, we stayed in touch and that was another big aspect of this, right? So now my seed was getting planted into this soil. So I found the soil that was growing, you know, the, the Gaia enriched soil. And so therefore I planted that seed. And the way I really re forced planting that seed is that I stayed in touch with him and I asked him, I said, what is the process for, you know, a Gaia show? 
I was asking him because at the time, I honestly never thought I would be on one of their original series in the sense of something that they were trying to create. But I was thinking, well, I can give them ideas, especially because the whole concept of plant consciousness, um, the whole idea of a nature inspired way of evolving is not always a concept that everybody understands, especially in, in the context of myself who works with this natural approach, but also with an esoteric approach mixed in, which is honestly, seriously, perfect for Gaia, if anything. But it still requires you to kind of like put together steps that might not seem or put together connections that might not seem so easy. So after meeting this director, um, we stayed in touch and I asked him because it's important for you to also respect the other person's process, right? So my question, my thing wasn't, oh, you should definitely have me on your on a show, but it was more like, what is the process for getting on a show? And what's even the process for getting a show? You know, because that was what I was thinking would be the best way possible. So he told me and we talked about it and he was saying, I'm not always the decision maker, but you know, if you have some ideas, please send them to me. So that was what I did. I created a proposal for an original series that was connected to plant intelligence. And this was now several years ago. It's kind of become, honestly, the podcast. <laughs> like that proposal is very similar to what I do now here on the podcast. Um, but at the time it was revolutionary. Nobody had been talking about plants in that way and plant intelligence and what who plants are as other kin, as beings that are on the level playing field with us, who are we in our plantness and our vegetality. Like there's many concepts that today we talk about, but that at that time were just sort of at the embryonic stage, right? So here's my seed that I've planted into this Gaia environment. And I'm sort of trying to nourish that seed by giving this fertilizer to this director. So, you know, giving this proposal is like adding some, you know, nitrogen into the soil or some phosphorus or whatever my seed really needed, adding some water. And I would periodically reach out to him. I did get very lucky in that this director actually worked with somebody else I knew at a later date. And so when they were working together, I was able to be present and kind of show that I was there and that I was still working on this on my craft and send them more examples of what I had been working on so that they could see that I wanted to not just be somebody who, you know, took from Gaia, but also who really gave to Gaia, who would be an active partner of Gaia, should I ever have the opportunity to do so. So this was, you know, kind of my personal process. And it's the process that I do whenever I want to manifest something. I look at myself first as the seed, what needs to change in me? Who do I need to become in order that when this opportunity presents itself, I am able to take the opportunity at a hundred you know, percent. I can, I can totally jump in. So what do I need to look at at the physical level, economic level, attachments level, limiting beliefs level, professionality level, but also karmic level, spiritual level. Like I really do look at my entire environment at, you know, hundred, no, 360 degrees because we forget that we are complete beings. And at the same time, at the same time, I completely surrender to whatever it is that is best for me. So while this process was going on, I wasn't calling this director and I wasn't thinking every day, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, how do I make this happen? I wasn't disappointed when I wouldn't get a call. That wasn't what was happening. Because the truth of the matter is that creating all of that really helped me grow, right? I became better on camera. I, I started to develop certain courses and classes and programs and the entire naturally conscious community, to be honest, all came out of this work. Um, I made many more connections as I was talking about it. I honed in on my own messaging and who I wanted to become. And more importantly, I got to really know who I wanted to help. And that was also extremely exciting for me because I think at the time that I was starting, I was really looking at myself more as the advocate for plants. And I was just shifting into the concept of how do I take this and really help humans? And how do we bring and bridge this world? And so that bridging became super clear in this process. So 
whether or not I would have ever gotten a Gaia show was no longer the, the measure of my success. It was my goal. It was my desire. But I trusted that the universe would show me whether that was the right path or whether it was my podcast itself or whether another channel or whether there was just a completely different thing. So that's another piece that's important because if you build an attachment to this, it's not really going to take you where you need to go. I mean, plants don't get attached to specific things because that thing could disappear at any chance. And so the plant has to be ready to adapt. And that was what I did. I put all of my energy into becoming the best me and to creating an environment that could easily host this. But if this thing appeared or didn't appear, it wasn't going to make or break me. It was going to just be one more part of my path. So you can imagine my deep surprise when I did get the phone call that said, hey, we want to interview you for a new show. We want you to be on this new show. So that was like the, you can't even imagine the dancing, the yelling, the screaming, the excitement, the so much, like it was so good because I felt so ready. Not only, not only was I ready, Dom and her was ready. And I say this because earlier, remember I told you I had somebody else that I knew who had filmed with them. And this person, when they had filmed with them, one section had been filmed here in Dom and her, and it was a mess. They had to get a team from, uh, from Turin to come out to record because we didn't have any of that infrastructure and such. Instead, when I went to, I was able to find a Dom and Hurian video team. There just happens to be now a group of people who have really stepped up their game. So we were able to record in Dom and Her, with Dom and Her Ians, with the director on Zoom. So it was so easy and beautiful because it had all the hallmarks of a true, like for me, plant-inspired Dom and Hurian process. So if you go and you go look at this series, you will see I'm sitting in the middle of our our, um, our capital, like the historic capital of Dom and Her, DeMille. I'm sitting there. I have all these beautiful plants around me. It was the end of the summer. It wasn't too hot because we were there for like four hours recording. Um, and it was just a gorgeous day. Everything synchronically came to be. And all of this wouldn't have happened again had I not created that environment. I really feel like I was able to move the synchronicity to do this. So the filming process not only benefited me, and that was so exciting, but it benefited Dom and her. It benefited this new young group of videographers. Like it really created an environment where we were all in it together. The director found people that he could trust. Um, he had a wonderful conversation with me, but he also had a wonderful conversation with them, even, you know, even across languages. Um, they had such great tools and infrastructure. They did, uh, they came to the site, they scouted the entire site and they found all these different spaces. And then the, with the director, they decided on which one to move so much so that when I showed up, um, it was great because three quarters of the place was already like everything was figured out for me. So this part was like very, very exciting. And I, again, I feel like it's the benefits of what we created. The idea that I had really um, prepared my seed of myself and of all my connections around me. And then once the soil was chosen, right? Once that seed was planted with that director, then I went on and nourished it, not just with that director and with Gaia directly, but with all the connections that I thought would be important for us to have in order to create something that was beneficial to everyone involved. And that was just so exciting. Now, as you know, these things take a long time before they actually happen. So I had to wait on, you know, all nervous until finally I got the, the message that said the series was ready and that it was going to be published. And you, again, you can't imagine my absolute excitement. So I want to tell you a little bit about this series. Again, the links are all in the show notes so that you can go off. If you do not have a Gaia membership yet, don't worry. 
With that link, you can get their seven day trial so that you can watch the episodes that have already been published, including my own episode. The show is called Divine Science. And Divine Science gathers visionary thought leaders with diverse perspectives and backgrounds to explore our evolving human potential. I mean, seriously, could you, could you pick a better show for me? Divine Science. It's like, it was just, it was made for me. So it also looks into emerging evidence of unseen phenomenon and how we can work with the gifts nature provides to awaken higher levels of consciousness. Each episode is seamlessly blend scientific exploration and spiritual understandings. Again, seriously, made for me. And it looks at it within a completely entirely new approach, which is, you know, why, why they asked me to be a part of it. So Divine Science is already online and I am in episode two, episode two, Whispers of the Earth, Plant Consciousness. Now you can only imagine when I was able to get the materials and I discovered that the trailer is pretty much starts in part, like the, the, the trailer for this episode starts with me with me speaking about, you know, plant consciousness, uh, hearing my voice just come through was amazing. And the episode really brings in some very interesting people, including, you know, Teresa Bullard, who I told you is an old friend and has a series on Gaia for many years. And there are, and Teresa Helgeson, which is somebody who worked with me. She is um, somebody who's been working with the music of the plants for many years that I am so happy that I was able to, you know, have her on the show so great. And they also have shows on sound, shows on death, shows on DMT, shows on consciousness. I mean, the amount of episodes on this series are super fascinating and interesting. We have Greg Braden and Adam Curry. I mean, there really is an amazing group of people. And again, I feel so privileged to be a part of this, especially because what this series shows me is that we truly are in it together. The more that we unlock about our natural hidden gifts, the more we understand that we are both physical as well as spiritual and subtle, that we have all these different aspects together, the more our planet starts to change and our lives become richer in harmony with the planet. We become co-creators with the planet. And this show, this series really does show that at many different levels. Now, of course, I am hoping that you are all going to go off and watch the show. Again, Divine Science, all the links are in it on Gaia. And I am, of course, hoping <laughs> that you're going to show so much love to Gaia. You, Those of you who have never had a subscription before, you're going to get subscriptions. You're going to share this with your friends. You're going to tell everybody because we need more plant consciousness in channels like Gaia. Gaia talks about so many great topics, Templars and time and, and uh, quantum physics and alchemy and so many beautiful things, plus yoga, nutrition, so many aspects. But seriously, who's talking about the plant consciousness? Who's bringing in that intelligence of nature at that level? I want to be the person to bring it in. I want to. I still have the dream of having that show that I pitched to this director so many years ago. And I will be updating the director and showing the director all of the people that are here listening to this podcast and watching this podcast because I want the director to know that we want to reawaken our plantness. We want to be in the world as beings of nature co-creating with nature and really participating in this world in a completely different way. And in order for me to reach these people, I need Gaia to give me that show. No, I, actually, yeah, I want Gaia to give me the show. I'll be honest. Again, I'm not attached to it. I'm not going to be disappointed if it doesn't happen. But you know, if it does, wouldn't that be the cherry on top? Like, wouldn't that be fantastic? So really, 
take the time, watch the show. If you love it, let me know, let Gaia know, share it with your friends. Let's really start this plant reawakening for everyone. Plant blindness has got us into so much trouble and our loss of our natureness, of our connection to our own true nature has really hindered our ability to hear from within so many aspects of co-creation. There are so many things that change in the way we live our lives when this vegetalness then inside of you grows and starts to emerge and joins your humanness and your animalness. And it starts to open your fungalness and your rockness. I mean, seriously, there are so many changes that happen. And this is really what's going to empower us to be the truly divine beings that we are. Being divine beings does not only mean connecting upwards, it means connecting downwards as well. And it outwards, it means connecting to our physicality just as much as to our subtleness. And this is what happens when you start to embrace the beingness that happens in our vegetality, in our plantness. So go off now and go watch Whispers of the Earth, Plant Consciousness, episode two in Divine Science on the Gaia Network. And I will be back next week to talk to you about, well, we'll discover that next week. It's going to be another great topic. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I really want to hear also how you feel about this manifesting process. And if you have any questions about it at all, right, how do you prepare your personal seed? And then how do you prepare the environment that you're going to go into? And then how do you stay connected and nourishing that environment as that seed grows? If you have any questions about this process, or you want to talk about how do you embody this process yourself, please feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on my website. There's all the information is in the show notes so that you can have complete access to your manifesting skills and your ability to confidently create and co-create the future that you want to live in. So that's me, Tigria Gardenia. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see each other again next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Reconnect with Plant Wisdom. Intro and outro music by Steve Shuley and Poinsettia from The Singing Life of Plants. So join me, Tigrila Gardenia, and my plant collaborators next time on Reconnect with Plant Wisdom.